Today's NICU nugget is on the GIR, or the glucose infusion rate. So watch on and you'll learn how to calculate it and you'll also learn why we care about it so much in the NICU. Glucose, as you probably know, is the major energy source for the fetus as well as the newborn. And babies just aren't as good at regulating their own glucose. So you can imagine that babies are very susceptible to hypoglycemia. The brain pretty much gets all of its energy from glucose. So if a baby does become hypoglycemic, then the brain is especially vulnerable. So we really care about glucose control in the NICU. The GIR is basically how many milligrams of glucose is being given to a baby's per kilo of their weight per unit of time. So the unit for the GIR is milligrams per kilo per minute. So logically, the GIR is going to depend on the concentration of the glucose that you're giving the baby as well as the rate that you're giving that fluid at. So a couple of things that you should know. First of all, when we talk about D10 or D20, what we're actually talking about is kind of a percentage of that fluid. So D10 means that there's 10 grams of glucose per 100 milliliters of water. Obviously D20 means there are 20 grams of sugar, of glucose, per 100 milliliters of water. The second thing that I know you all know if you work in the NICU is that most of the time we calculate the amount of fluid that we're giving a baby as milliliters per kilogram per day. And we normally give anywhere between about 60 mLs per kilo per day to about 160 mLs per kilo per day. So remember, the GIR is given per minute. So we somehow have to convert that milliliters per kilo per day into how much we're giving per minute. So realize that there are 24 hours in a day and 60 minutes in an hour. So altogether, there are 1,440 minutes in a day. So the GIR equals the concentration of the sugar that we're giving multiplied by the volume that we're giving, divided by X. So if you figure out all the units, then the GIR equals the concentration of the sugar, so D10 or D20 in that case, multiplied by the volume that you're giving the baby per day, so in milliliters per kilo per day, divided by 144. Let's go through a couple of examples. So let's say that you have a baby that you're giving D10 to, D10W, at 80 cc's per kilo per day. What is the GIR? So the GIR is equal to 10 times 80 divided by 144. So in this case, it's equal to 5.55. Let's give another example. Let's say a three kilo baby is receiving D12.5 at a rate of 12 mLs an hour. So to calculate the GIR, let's first of all calculate how much that baby is getting in a day. So 12 mLs times 24 hours, the baby's getting a total of 288 milliliters each day. Now the baby weighs three kilos, so the baby is receiving 288 divided by three equals 96 mLs per kilo per day. So the GIR is 12.5, because that was the concentration of the sugar, times 96 mLs per kilo per day, divided by 144. In this case, it's 8.33. We really only use this calculation when the baby is on fluids, or we're calculating the GIR of the fluids. Normally, when a baby has already become hypoglycemic or in a very premature infant, that's basically completely dependent on IV fluids. A newborn baby needs somewhere between four to eight milligrams per kilogram per minute of GIR. Even in a micropremie who's having loads of issues with sugar control and is ending up with like really, really high sugar, so sugar's in the 300s and 400s, you really shouldn't drop the GIR below four mg per kg per minute because that is what the baby's brain needs. So you take the GIR down to four and then you give insulin or whatever else you need to do to try to help control the sugar. On the other end of the spectrum, sometimes you have to keep climbing up on the GIR because the baby is hypoglycemic. 
This happens most commonly in infants of diabetic mothers where they have loads of insulin circulating around their system and they're needing loads of sugar to try to maintain euglycemia. So basically you carry on marching up on the GIR and you really shouldn't be going above about 15 mg per kg per minute. If you're reaching those types of concentrations to try to maintain a euglycemia, then really at that point you should start considering other medications, whether it's glucagon, whether it's steroids, um, and we'll discuss that in another topic. Another scenario you might need really high GIRs is in a surgical kid who is unable to eat. So for example, a gastroschisis or a really bad um, abdominal surgery or something where they, where they can't eat, but because they've gone through surgery, they need a lot of extra energy to try to grow. So sometimes these babies need high concentrations of GIR just to get some growth because so much of their energy is going into the healing. Remember, if your dextrose concentration goes above 12.5, so above D12.5, then you cannot put that through a peripheral IV. So dextrose concentration above 12.5 has to go through a central catheter. And that's it about GIR. I hope you learned something today. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment below with any other topics you'd like me to discuss. Thank you.